Hi everyone, thank you for watching Logayata. You can post your chemistry related questions in the comment section and I'll make a video solution for that. The concept becomes easy to understand if we take the example of the analogies. In this video, I'll be telling you how to calculate the order of the reaction with respect to the reactants as well as the overall order of the reaction. In this video, to understand this concept, I have taken the analogy of a box and here the box is in a form of a cube. So let's name them. This is box A and this is box B. And the length for this one is the edge length is L and for this the edge length is 2L. So this is twice of the first one. Okay, now let's count the number of vertices for the first box. So you will see here for the first box that is box A, it is 8, right? And for box B also it is 8. So you can say that the number of vertices doesn't depend upon the length of the edges or the size of the box. And we can say that the number of vertices is proportional to L raised to the power 0 because something raised to power is 0 is 1. Okay, now let's see that how can we calculate the sum of the the sum of the edge length edge length so the formula is 12 l okay so for the first box it will remain 12 l but for the box b it will be 12 into 2 l so you can see here that if i have doubled the length of the edges the sum has also doubled so we can say here that the sum is proportional to l raised to the power 1 okay so because if we have doubled the length the sum has also doubled so it is directly proportional now let's see the area for the box sorry area for the box so the formula is 6L square. So the first box, it will remain 6L square, but for the box B, it will become twice of L. So it is 6 into twice of L square. So here we can say that the area is proportional to L square because if we have doubled the length, the area has become four times. Okay. Now, next thing is the volume so for the volume the formula is l cube similarly for box b it will be twice of l cube so the volume is proportional to l raised to the power 3 yeah so similar is the case for the order of the reactants if the rate of the reaction doesn't depend upon the reactant concentration then we say that it is zero order Okay, so it is raised to power 0. If it is directly proportional to the reactant concentration, then we say that it is first order. Okay, and if it is uh, proportional to uh, square of the reactant concentration, then we say that it is second order and similarly the third order. Okay, so we can easily predict that what is the order of the reaction with respect to the reactant by seeing the rate of the reactions. Now let's see an example. So here in the question, if you need to find out the order, the this type of table would be given and in which the concentrations of A and B are given and the rate are given. And let's try to understand what does this table mean. So here this 1, 2, 3 means that three experiments are done, right? Then this A, then these uh, um, numbers are given. This means that these were the initial concentrations in these experiments. The first experiment, it was 0 0.10 and second, this one and third, this one. So similarly, this B means this is the concentration of B in the first experiment this is the concentration of b in second and this is the concentration of b in third experiment and the concentrations units are mole per liter so it is written here next thing is the rate is given 
So the rate for the first uh, experiment is given, then second experiment is given, and the third experiment is given, and these this is the unit of the rate. Okay. Now let's try to find out the orders. Now first of all, you need to see that which concentrations are same here. The concentration of B is same in first and second experiment. So this means that from first and second experiment, we can find the order with respect to A because the concentration of B is constant. So we can find the concentration uh, order with respect to A. Similarly, for uh, for the experiments one and third, the initial concentrations of A are same. So from first and third experiment, we can find the order with respect to B. Now let's see how can we calculate. If we are given this question in the objective type question, then you can do it directly. Like you can see here that the concentrations of B are same. So you can compare these two concentrations and you can say that this is the second uh, experiment concentration is twice as that of first. Okay. And we will see that how the rate is changing. So here also it has doubled. So I already told you if by doubling the concentration of A, the rate has also doubled or it is directly proportional, then we will say that the order with respect to A is one. Okay. Now let's see for the, uh, to find the order with respect to B. Now to find that we will see, we will consider the experiments first and third. Okay, now here you can see that for first and third experiment, the concentrations of B has halved, right? Now we will say the rate for first and third experiment, the rate has not changed. Yeah, so I have already told you if rate doesn't depend upon the concentration change, then it is raised to the bar zero it is zero order so for this if we want to write the rate law it will be r is equal to small k a raised to the power one b raised to the power zero right where r is the rate small k is the rate constant and these are the orders with respect to a and b if we want to calculate the overall order of this reaction it will be 1 plus 0 that is equal to 1. So we have added up the orders, right? So it is 1 plus 0 that is equal to 1. Now this was for the objective exam, but if you are given this type of question in the subjective exam, then you have to follow the steps. Now let's see how we will we do that. The question is at 1000 Kelvin, the following data were obtained in a homogeneous reaction. The homogeneous reaction is a reaction in which the reactants and products are in same phase. For example, here all are in gaseous state. So the reaction is 2A plus 2B gives C plus 2D. And the table is given as I showed in the last slide also. And then you need to calculate the order of the reaction with respect to both A and B and overall reaction order. So if you are given this type of question in the subjective exam, then how will you do it? Let's see. So first of all, you will write it as let suppose the rate law for this reaction is R is equal to K, A raised to power X, B raised to the power Y. And we need to find the values of X and Y. So as here, the reactants are A and B. So that's why I've written A and B here. If the reactants are something else, you need to write some that here. Now, next thing is the concentration of B in first and second experiment are same. So it means that from first and second experiment, we can find the order with respect to A, right? And the concentrations of A is same in second and third experiment. So from there, we can find the order with respect to B, right? So let's try out. We will write the ratios. So R1 over R2, first we are finding the order with respect to A. So that's why we have considered the experiments first and second. So we have taken the ratios of the rates that is R1 over R2 will be equal to K over K. So the rate constant is same in, uh, remains same even if the concentrations are changing or the rates are changing. And then we need to put the value of A 1 upon A 
2 this is the these are the concentrations of a in first and second experiment raised to the power x and then we will write b1 over b2 raised to the power y okay now we will see here that the k is same in first and second experiment so it will cancel it out then b1 and b2 are also same so that will also cancel so we can write it as r1 over r2 is equal to a1 over a2 raised to the power x right so we will put the values here the rate in first experiment is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 5 for second experiment it is 9 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 5 is equal to concentration of a in the first experiment is 5 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 upon 15 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 whole raised to the power x so we will cancel the values whatever gets cancelled so this gets cancelled so this is 1 and this is 3 similarly here also this will get cancelled and here also 1 and here 3 so we can write it as 1 by 3 is equal to 1 by 3 raised to the power x so from here we can say that x value is 1 okay so the order with respect to a is 1 now let's fi uh, find the order with respect to b now to calculate the order with respect to b we will we will compare the experiment second and third because here the concentration of a is same now what we will do is we will write r1 over r3 sorry r2 over r3 is equal to concentration of b in second experiment upon concentration of b in third experiment raised to the power y now we will put the values here so it will be r2 is 9 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 5 upon 3.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 can be written as 36 into 10 to the power minus 5. So we have simplified it. So concentration of B in the second experiment is 2.5 multi multiplied 10 to the power minus 3 upon 10 into 10 to the power minus 3 whole raised to the power y. Now we will cancel the values here. Here 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 5 will cancel out here 1, here 4. And similarly, this will also cancel out and here 1, here 4. So, it can be written as 1 by 4 is equal to 1 by 4 raised to the power y. Similarly, here also y is equal to 1. So, order with respect to a and with respect to b, each is 1 and the overall order is 1 plus 1 is equal to Now let's see this question. So the question is consider the following reaction 2a plus b gives c and this table is given and you need to calculate the order of the reaction with respect to both a and b and overall reaction order. So in this question you can table you can see that here in first and second experiment the concentrations of a are kept constant and so you can find out the order with respect to b from first and second experiment. But you can also see that other concentrations are not same. So how will we calculate the order with respect to A? Let's see here. So I need to tell you one thing more here that the order is always not a whole number. It's not always 0, 1, 2, 3. It can also be a fractional number. It can also be 1.5, 2.5 or so on. Okay. So in this question, we will be seeing that something like that also. So let's see how will we solve this so we can see here that in first and second experiment the concentrations of a are kept constant and b are varied okay and when we see the rates also we can see that the rate remains same although the concentrations of b have changed but the rates have remained same so we can clearly say that the rate is proportional to b raised to the power 0 because it is independent of the concentration of b so now it becomes clear now what we will do is 
we will keep this value here and we will find the value uh, we will find the rate sorry order with respect to a now for that we will compare the first and third experiment okay so let's see what we will do is we will write rate 1 over rate p that is equal to 5.07 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 5 upon 1.43 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 is equal to we will write the concentrations of a so it will be 0 0.20 upon 0 0.40 raised to the power x now here why we didn't write the b although it was changed so you just keep guessing and if you know the answer you can comment below so here what happened is we will cancel out the values so we can see here that this and this so it is one this is two so when you will solve this whole you will get the value of x is equal to 1.5 so the order with respect to a is 1.5 and order with respect to b is 0 right so we can write the rate law as r is equal to small k a raised to the power 1.5 and b raised to the power 0 or the overall order can also be written as 1.5 plus 0 that is equal to 1.5 so i hope all these things are clear to you and with the help of analogy the first order second order third order became very simple for you all to understand and if you want similar videos uh, more then you can comment below and I'll make a video for that. Okay. Bye. Bye